In this video, I'm going to show you how to debug a Lambda function executing live on the AWS platform. So I already have a Lambda function, which is a basic uh, Hello World Pojo, which is based on the AWS samples. And I have it configured on my Lambda console. And I'm going to show you its execution with a sample message. And you can see the first name and last name, John Snow, results in the greeting, Hello John Snow. And this is configured using the Java 11 platform. And I'm going to change this to be um, supporting live debugging. And the first thing I'm going to do is add the Slapforge debug layer into this function. And I'm going to specify its ARN, which I have copied into the clipboard. And the next step I'm going to do is change the runtime from Java 11 to custom. And the last step to enable rerun remote debugging is to configure three environment variables, which I will copy from my script here, which I will talk about next. So the first key is the slap key, which is similar to my username. And that's going to be given to you when you register for this functionality on the Slapforge website. And the next variable is the secret, which is similar to a password. And the final variable is a string called the session, which can be any string uh, that is provided both to the IDE and the connecting Lambda function so that you can have multiple sessions, but uh, separate them from each other. And to make my remote debugging more meaningful, I'm going to increase the default timeout to about two minutes, and I'm going to save this function. And on my developer machine, I'm going to run this IDE proxy, which will be a small program connecting through a Slapforge intermediary server and allowing your IDE to connect to uh, the local host port 5005 over which the proxy will connect you to the live AWS environment. So I'm going to start my remote debugging session. And once the ID is connected, I'm going to go back into my console and fire up the test request. And uh, the very first time it might take a couple of seconds for the IDE and the VM to sync. And afterwards your debugging will be much more faster. And once the breakpoint is hit on my IDE, I will be able to um, change uh, the variables or look at the values. For example, if I want to look at the AWS context uh, and look at the log stream name, etc., I can do that. I can also change these variables from John Snow to my name. And I can step through to the next line. And see what is going to be the greeting at this step. And as you can see, while this happens, my console is blocked on the execution of the function. And I can keep this running up to the default of 15 minutes, which is supported by Lambda. So once my execution seems correct, I let the function continue. And coming back to the console, I can see, OK, my function executed correctly. And I was able to debug. And the next execution will be much faster. And once you trigger the request, you will be able to see the IDE coming up much faster. And you can continue similarly at this stage as well. And for as long as you require, this IDE will be connected to the container which is hosting your Lambda function. And you can continue to debug your function as many times as you want. And uh, we will also support event-based Lambda functions, for example, which are triggered by S3 events very soon. And we will be making this feature generally available since early 2020 in January. And we look forward to hearing from you about feedback and your comments on this technology.